Hello, hello, my beautiful people. I am going to show you something exciting. I know a few of you have been asking me, uh, don't mind the poo bags, <laughs> have been asking me to show you more things that are free edible food. So I'm going to start off with, which I'm excited to show you. Okay, we're going to put that aside. I'm not sure if anybody knows what this is. Um... We have a place nearby where the city planted these trees. And this is called the ginkgo tree. And there's another name for it. They call it uh, the maiden's hair. Believe it or not, this tree, there are so many benefits in these leaves. Number one, it benefits brain function. It helps brain function. It gives you energy. It fights inflammation on your body. Um, if you uh, if you suffer with PMS, uh, making tea with this helps fight and control PMS problems. Um, it is another benefit. Uh, another great benefit is it helps with anxieties and depression, guys. It's also uh, good for your uh, for your eye health. This stuff is amazing. So if you ever see a ginkgo tree, do take the time to take some of the leaves. Don't destroy the tree when you're picking it, but try and harvest some of the leaves. Bring it home. You could dry it and then make tea with it, or you could take them fresh. Just boil some water, and you simply put these leaves in and let it, after the water is boiled, and just let it steep for about 10 minutes and have some beautiful, beautiful tea with loads of benefits. Loads and loads of benefits. I'm telling you, nature really provides us with a lot of stuff that we don't have to go out and spend money on chemical pills. Like for people that are suffering anxiety or if they have depression or even if you feel your joints are inflamed a bit, having tea made from this beautiful tree you don't okay so just think of it this way you don't have to spend money on medication you don't have to put chemicals in your body and all you're doing is putting a natural natural herb and this is the ginkgo tree the maiden hair that's another name for it so we have a beautiful tree I would have picked more but my dog was pulling me and so I had no choice but to just pick a few to show you and yeah, I'm going to make a tea for myself later on, too. Now, here's another thing that's very exciting. This is the same place, and they planted. You ready, guys? Look at this. I'm not sure if you know what these are, but if you see any tree growing by you, a city tree that was planted, if it's in the city, or if, you're, um, if you spot this tree, this here, believe it or not, is called the service berry. They call it the uh, Saskatoon berry. They call it the Shadbush berry. Um, or they call it the June berry. And they only make these berries in the month of June. And I'm not sure if you can see a close up of this berry, how it looks. They usually come in these beautiful clusters. And if you don't get to them, the birds do. And they eat them all up. So I try to pick some. But again, like I said, it was a little hard to pick with my dog tugging at me. But these are super delicious. Mmm. My God, they're so good. They taste almost like it has like a cherry taste to it. It's hard to describe. It's just simply delicious. And the best part... These little buggers are loaded with vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin E, which is good for your skin, and they're simply delicious. If you manage to find a tree like this, usually the city plants them around, do pick some up. But before you put anything in your mouth, again, I'm going to tell you, do your homework, guys. You have to know what you're putting in your mouth. Um, how did I know about these? When they planted the trees, they also planted. The, uh, they also had the tree tagged with a name, so I was able to look that up years ago, and did my homework. And then we did try them, and we've been eating them for years. 
and they are simply delicious like i said the tree is getting bigger and bigger so wherever i can grab it i do um but yeah if you want to try something delicious here's another thing that is free that nature gives us guys really really good now you know i go crazy and i love picking mushrooms i love mushrooms mm. This is so good. I'm going to leave some of this for my daughter because I know she's going to want some. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside. Now I'm going to show you something else. You can see I, I get busy when I'm walking my dog. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, again, do your homework, guys, okay? Here is, because of the rain, now these are called, look at them, they look like a mini portobello. Do they not? And notice how the bottom kind of goes into a curve. Well, we've eaten this, so we know we're not going to die. Mm -hmm. But again, oh, hold on, guys. I'm losing my juice. Okay, so we've had these mushrooms, and we know they're edible. But before you put any wild mushroom in your mouth, guys, do your homework. You have to do a good research. If you're not sure, see if you can find someone who... Um, knows about mushrooms there's groups that you can join and you can just learn how to pick wild mushrooms and have again an abundance of free food now this bag got a little crushed because my dog was tugging me and my bag was shaking so I did ruin some of these mushrooms but I want to show you when they're young I'm gonna crack this open you see how light they are inside when they're young, they're light, and as they age, they get dark like this. So if you can find them, they're best to find them when they're young. Uh, when they get dark like this, you want to check and make sure there's no bugs in it. Sometimes the worms get to them. But yeah, this is something that um, you have to check when you're picking mushrooms. Like this one is younger than that one. This one is still closed. It still has the veil. So... Um, that one I know if I'm going to crack it open, it's going to be a nice light colored mushroom. Almost like a light brown to a, a tan. Like you see that one there's kind of uh, like a cafe latte color. This one kind of broke on me, but this one is pretty much spent now. It's not even white anymore. I just picked it up to see. This one is pretty much done. I'm not going to use this one. I'm just going to put it outside and let the spores do its thing. But these are called field mushrooms, or they're called meadow mushrooms. Anyhow, these are the younger ones. These are the ones I'm going to cook. This one, this one. These ones, I'm going to put them out and just let the spores do their thing. But I wanted to pick them to show you anyhow. I'm going to cut this one here. If it's still white inside, I'll be able to, uh, to cook it. Otherwise, I'll just, like I said, let it do its own thing. But these are mushrooms that you find... After a good rainfall, you'll find these mushrooms either on um, an overpath. You see, that's a fresh one. It's a little lighter. Uh, you find these mushrooms growing on a field of grass. Uh, sometimes you'll see just it breaking through the soil. Those are the best ones because those are the young ones like this one where they're just breaking through. Or like this one here, it still has the cap closed. But like I said, do your homework. Uh, if you're not sure, leave the mushrooms where they are. I know these mushrooms well. We've had them. We're still here to talk about it <laughs> because some mushrooms can either make you very sick or they can kill you. So you have to know what you're eating and what you're picking. But if you do your homework and just check on field mushrooms, um, you could check on meadow mushrooms. They'll show you or they'll explain to you how to check these mushrooms to see if they're edible or not. And again, there's a spore print to it. The spore print to these are very dark. They're not white. Um, but they're really, really good. They're almost like the button mushrooms that you buy at the store. Just a little more wild, a little more mushroomy. But they are simply delicious. My daughter loves them. So I didn't have a chance. This one here, like I said, I picked them today because it was raining a day ago. So we were able to pick these. Um, these ones here I picked uh, the other day so they've been sitting in the fridge so they're kind of getting very ripe so 
probably won't be good. But there's a way of testing it by scratching it. And if it goes like yellow, 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 you know, stay away from it. You see, this does not go yellow. I could bruise it as much as I want with my nail and it's not going yellow. So you know that this mushroom is not the one that you should not eat. But yeah, there's different ways of checking your mushrooms. So these ones are good to eat. These ones, I'm going to put them outside and maybe the the spores will do its thing. But I will put these out there again because they're overly ripe. I'm going to show you when I open it up. You see how it's no longer white. So this is not a mushroom I'm going to put in my mouth because it's done. It's done its thing. We're not going to put this one. This is another mushroom. A little, a little less uh old uh, this is not as old but it's still you can see that it's changing and it's pretty much done compared to these ones that are young and they're beautiful and they're white inside so these are the ones i'm going to cook these are the ones i'm going to put outside maybe the squirrels will get to eat them so again if you see mushrooms on your grass on your lawn before you cook them and eat them you need to know what you're doing you want to make sure that you get them when they're young, like this one, where it's still like a tanny color. And when they're closed like this, where inside, if you crack them open, they're not as, they're not as dark. So these are okay for me to eat. But there you go. If you see any of these berries, first do your research and then find out. Yeah, look around. There's a lot of great things out there. Ginkgo tree, I say don't worry about it. Uh, if you see somebody who plants it and he sprays his garden, maybe I wouldn't go pick the leaves there. Nobody sprays where this tree is, so this is good to go. So I'm going to make a nice tea for myself and one for my daughter. But yeah, how exciting is this, right? Free food, guys. Sometimes you're just going for a nice walk, walking the dog. Look around. There's things out there that are really exciting and things that you can bring home and give a try. Very exciting things out there. So, uh, and this is all stuff that's free for us. Unfortunately, I waited too long for these, so, yeah. Maybe this one I could still savage. This one's a goner, so I'm gonna put this in my garden. I was excited to show you the ginkgo, the ginkgo leaves. That's really good to have. It's good to harvest them, dry them up, and then uh, you have tea for the fall, for the winter, if you harvest them soon enough. Um, yeah, just pick up some of those ginkgo leaves if you have a tree nearby. And like I said, either you put them to dry or you have them fresh, but they're very good for you. And these are simply, simply yummy, yummy, yummy. When I tell you these are good, I wish I was able to get more, but my dog was pulling me more than I can. It was almost impossible. But there you go. I've got some mushrooms I'm going to cook up. Some I'm going to go feed my garden with. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.